Hey, what's going on guys? So Aston Villa have reached an agreement to sign Sevilla fullback Ludwig Augustinsson on a season-long loan deal with an option to buy, subject to the Swede obtaining a work permit, which should really only be a matter of time. He's been brought in to provide competition for Luca Dinia, who in my opinion is in the top five left-backs in the league, following Matt Target's departure to Newcastle United. With his former teammate Diego Carlos also arriving at Villa Park, who I've already done a video on, which you can access via the top right-hand corner of your screen, he left someone around that will help him adapt to completely new surroundings, something he's quickly becoming accustomed to, given this will be the fifth different country he plies his trade in following stints around Sweden, Denmark, Germany, and Spain. While I won't go into Augustinsson's life history for those who may be unaware of him, it's important to note that last season was an unexpected bump in the road in what has otherwise been an upward career trajectory. He came through his local side Bromma Pochkarna's academy and was signed up by one of the nation's biggest sides in Gothenburg after just one top flight campaign. Taking no time whatsoever to settle down, he was named the league's best left back and sealed a move to FC Copenhagen, the biggest club in Denmark who I'm sure you're all aware of from their numerous exploits in the Champions League. That also happens to be where he met current Villa sporting director Johan Lang, who no doubt played a role in making this transfer happen. During this time, Augustinsson ended up winning the European Under-21 Championship, in which he played all five games for Sweden and even scored in the penalty shootout in the final against tournament favourites Portugal. While he's had his fair share of injury concerns, including a period of five months spent on the sidelines, he ended up finishing third in the Danish league assist table despite playing less than half of the games and won two back-to-back -back league titles while doing so. He was linked with the likes of Liverpool but ended up signing for Werder Bremen, where he spent four years and even scored a stoppage time winner in the Bundesliga relegation playoff second leg versus FC Heidenheim to keep his club up on away goals. Unfortunately for Augustinsson, his time at Sevilla has proved to be less fruitful as Argentine international Marcus Acuna has made the left-sided position his own. However, he's remained professional throughout and been a valuable member of the squad. Positive traits he'll certainly need while playing second fiddle to Dinia at Villa. Now, I've seen plenty of folk on social media question this signing, but what they fail to understand is that not every incoming has to be a potential world beater. Squad depth is very much the name of the game, particularly given the introduction of the five substitutes rule. And while not being at the level of Dinia, this man shares many characteristics to the Frenchman in the way he plays, which will allow Gerard to use him as a like-for-like -like replacement without having to make any alterations from a tactical point of view, which is massive news. This also allows FA Youth Cup winner Ben Christine to go out on loan and show what he's about. I mean, fucking hell, lads. Villa's academy's different gravy at the minute, but that's for a different video. Not to mention, it's clear as day that Ashley Young's legs have gone and he's being kept around for his versatility and experience, which will be handy in filling in during times of fixture pileups. In terms of Augustinson's style of play, he's someone that's highly composed in possession, which is aided by the fact that he played in central midfield as a youngster. He showcases a great understanding of the game and has a wealth of experience under his belt, with over 300 games at club level coupled with 46 international caps. He's very consistent with his performances and has a wand of a left foot. By the way, no one ever fucking says wand of a right foot, do they? Bit of a head scratcher that, but we move on. The lad is also a specialist set piece taker and is often given both corner and free kick duties. However, he's also extremely one footed and barely uses his right when in possession. Additionally, he lacks pace which could be problematic against Premier League forwards but is nonetheless compensated by his positional sense. He doesn't have it in him to dribble past opposition players so isn't of much use when given that responsibility against low blocks but does know when to overlap his winger and whip in across from the byline. Out of possession, he tends to stay on his feet and doesn't commit himself into challenges. Instead, you'll find him making intelligent interceptions and winning the ball by waiting for other teams' wingers to make a mistake. This guy is a monster in the air as well and wins the majority of his aerial duels while also being intelligent enough to place himself laterally to block crosses coming into the box. Overall, this is a solid but unspectacular signing which will help improve Villa's squad depth immensely. A big bonus here is that Villa have the option to buy rather than an obligation so can see how this fella gets on before deciding whether or not to retain him. As per usual, this was done completely in the shadows and came out of nowhere. I swear, Villa must be a bloody nightmare for these bullshit transfer merchants on Twitter. They haven't got a clue as to what's about to happen next, which is the way I wish it was for my club as well. Cheers for tuning in, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If that is the case, please do consider giving it a like and subscribe for more football-related content. As always, I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have in mind, and I really look forward to hearing your thoughts down below. Have a great week ahead and take care. Peace.